What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. We have an awesome, exciting video today looking at the top key comics to invest in before the 2023 MCU releases. Marvel Studios Phase 4 continues on, folks. Now, with this video, we are looking at specifically theatrical releases. I will be doing a separate video where we'll be looking at books related to the 2023 Disney Plus slate. Lots of exciting stuff to talk about here. We have a few movies that, that are confirmed, but we have one movie that is still unconfirmed, but I'm going to talk about what movie I think that is and what books should relate to that. Now, before we get into it, of course, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the links in the description below. And I want to say congratulations to Matt Labno for winning this awesome, awesome XO Man of War BCW store folio filled with a grab bag of comics. Matt Labno. Hit me up. You can find me on Instagram. Private message me there so I can get this prize out to you. And folks, to celebrate my 10K giveaway, we are doing another giveaway for this video right here. We are giving away a beautiful EGS 9.8 Red Sonia number one. This is the Dynamite Virgin variant, folks. Look at that beauty right there. And it is a Journos Comics custom EGS slab. If you want a chance to win this book, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, click that notification bell, click the like button on this video, and comment below letting me know that you are subscribed to the channel. Now, at the end of the video, at some point, I will be doing a trivia question. So anybody that answers that trivia question in the comments as well, you're going to get a second entry into having a chance to win this awesome book. So big shout out to EGS. But... Without further ado, let's get into these books, folks. We're going to look at these books by each movie. So what's the first film coming out in spring of 2023? That is going to be The Marvel. So let's look at what books we could spec on for this film. Right here, we have Miss Marvel number 16 from the 2014 series. This is the first meeting of Kamala Khan and Carol Danvers. Now, it is confirmed that Kamala Khan... Uh, as well as Monica Rambeau and Carol Danvers will show up in Miss Marvel. Now, we don't know if it's going to be the first time that Carol Danvers and Kamala Khan meet. That actually might happen in the Miss Marvel Disney Plus show, which is going to be released prior to the Marvel's film. But still, I think this is a fun spec book because if we look at the numbers, look at this. There's, there's no CGC sales on the census and the average raw for this book is sitting at about $15. So it just goes to show you that this is a fun little book that you, you aren't breaking bank for. That is something that you could pick up for you, you know an affordable price that might gain value over time. Because I think the relationship between these two characters is definitely going to be a strong one in the MCU. Hopefully for at least a good few years to come. And that can definitely bring eyes and attention to this book. But without going any further, folks... I want to remind you all, I'm not here to tell you what to buy or how to collect. I'm here to provide facts and data sprinkled in with my own personal opinion. And you all should make smart collecting and purchasing decisions. If you aren't willing to take risk in investing and in speculating, or if you have no love for any of these comics or characters, then maybe it just might not be for you. But we're going to move on to the next book, folks. And that is Avengers Annual number 10. I think this book still has room to grow, even though it's been doing uh, big things on the market. This is, of course, the first appearance of Rogue, and it is my humble opinion that we can still see Rogue show up in the Marvel's movie, and maybe, just maybe, we're going to get a live-action origin story of how Rogue gets her powers. Current CGC 9.6 per market value of this book, sitting at about $440 next to three years ago, it was sitting at 170. That's a 159% increase in value over those three years. That is big. Average raw still sitting at $65. And what I say about average raw, it doesn't pertain to a specific grade. You just take all the raw sales and no amount of the grade, divide it up by the amount of books sold. There you go. So you can get a rough idea of finding some type of book and maybe a middle range grade for that price. And also remember, fair market value is a rolling average, folks. It's never an exact science. All right, next up, for the Marvels, we have Mighty Avengers 
number one. And, you know, this has been speculated on ever since we saw Monica Rambeau show up in one division. First appearance of Monica Rambeau as Spectrum. Now, we know that uh, Maria was given the codename Photon. We saw that Easter egg in the WandaVision TV show. And it is hinted that, you know, whatever might happen in the future, uh, she might take up, Monica, that is, the Spectrum mantle. Now, it's interesting because there was a lot of dialogue in the WandaVision show from Monica that showed us this kind of like, th th there was some kind of dynamic between Monica and Carol, something unsaid. And I think something might happen leading up into the Marvel's film that could allow Monica to take a different mantle. Now, again, with this book still being spec'd on for the last year plus, it's still pretty decently affordable. Let's look at average raw. Again, a $15 average raw. It's still out there for decently cheap. But a current CGC 9.8 fair market value sitting at $180, the way the 9.8 market is these days, that is fairly affordable too. But it has tripled in value over the last three years because three years ago, it was sitting at just $60. That's a 200% increase in value. So again, I don't go spending crazy money in this book. If you can find it in the wild in a nice high grade, hey, low risk, a lot of possibility here for sure. All right, folks, before we move on to the next film, I want to remind you all that if you are in need of comic book supplies, please check out bcwsupplies.com where you can use the code journos to receive 10% off of your order. Save some money using this code. It never expires. You can use it as many times as you want. And as most of you probably know, I stand behind BCW product. So definitely go save some money if you are in need. That link is below as well. But the next release coming out in 2023, folks, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 with that summer release. And it has been announced. The High Evolutionary has been cast for this film. So here we have Thor 134, the first appearance of the High Evolutionary. Now, you might say, Chris, the casting's already happened. This book is to the moon and back. Well, it's definitely past that point of no return, so to say. But... I personally, again, my opinion, I still think this book has room to grow leading up to a trailer, at least. And if the character is done extremely well and they don't kill him off, which I don't think they're going to do just in that movie, I think this is one of these villains that has long-term spec potential. Now, I already believe that this is a book, as a Silver Age book, that is going to have long-term potential no matter how it ebbs and flows depending on the movies. But you got to be careful anytime there is that speculation hype because you don't want to, you know, buy it at a peak and then, you know, something doesn't pan out in the films and it, it dips down and you lose money. But again, over that long term, it can still increase and increase. And maybe 10 years from now, it'll go past what you paid. But you still want to be careful. Let's look at these numbers. Current CGC 7.5, $800. Next to three years ago, sitting at 357 so 124% increase in value with the average raw sitting at 155 you could probably expect to find you know a, a, a mid-grade comic for for about 155 now i paid i think i paid roughly 40 dollars for mine and i bought it i believe in 2018 so it goes to show you that this book has indeed caught some fire under it but again just if you're in the market for this book be patient uh make sound decisions you know don't don't fomo out on it but uh, i'm telling you if you want to hold for that long term, it, it just there there could be stuff out there that could still be beneficial to allow you to grow if you're going to hold for the five, the ten plus years. Next up, folks, this is another one in the same boat with these Guardian books. We're in a very similar situation. Marvel premiere number one, the first appearance of him as Warlock, which is the iteration of Adam Warlock, but he technically didn't get the name Adam until issue two. So now you're saying, well, you know, we got the casting you know, that the cat's out of the bag. And this book is definitely on fire. But again, another situation where once we get a trailer or we get an image seeing Adam Warlock on screen, I, again, I think this book is going to continue to to elevate for that short term. And if he knocks it out of the park in the movie, I, I don't think this book is going to cool off. It can increase more. And then maybe it stagnates a little bit until we see him again. Uh, but you never know when it comes to movie spec. But let's look at the numbers. Current CGC 9.0, 1,095. 
three years ago, $428. That's a 156% increase in value with an average raw sitting at $182. Again, a long-term a long-term solvent investment, no matter what happens, but you got to be careful playing the market with books that have already had casting announcements in or trailers or anything like that. The next one on the list here is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Here is Avengers Annual number five. This is a book that I recently picked up myself. I picked up a nice, fine, plus looking copy. This is the first reprinting of Avengers 8 and 11, which is technically the first and second appearance of Kang. I talked about this book in my unboxing, how I've, I champion these early reprints, the Silver Age and Bronze Age reprints, when it's the first reprinting of these key books like this. So if, if the first appearance of Kang or the second appearance of Kang is out of reach for you, this is a very affordable second option and i think reprints like this are becoming more and more sought after there's more attention and more eyes on them but if we look at uh, a current cgc 9.6 sale which happened last year it's a very high grade for 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 this book from this age 175 dollars, and that was it it was only one sale there was nothing else there folks and no other grade that shows me that People weren't really looking at sending this book in, spending money to get it, get it graded and so forth. Average raw, though, sitting at about $22. So again, you could probably find, you know, a, a mid-grade copy for $22. I think I bought mine for $30. I think I paid $30 for mine plus shipping. And again, mine was like a fine plus copy. Uh, I found it on the Mercari app. So again, a very low-risk investment. Again, uh, I think long term, this book has the ability to hold value. Will it ever be a, a crazy high priced key book? You know, I'm not saying that at all, but we know that Avengers 8 and even 11, that second appearance, are going to be that. So if you want an affordable copy to have in your collection and also to spec on to maybe, you know, uh, get a little bit of return on investment in that short term, I think this is an awesome book to go after, in my opinion. All right, next up, <laughs> what was I just saying? Does this book look familiar? Now, this is the second appearance of Kang. This is Avengers number 11. So, uh, again, if you're priced out of Avengers number 8, this is the second best thing. This also has the first Spider-Man Avengers crossover. So, another cool key factor in this book. Now, let's look at these, uh, these values right here. I took in a nice mid-grade for this book with a current CGC 5.5 sitting at $460. Three years ago, 210, so it's more than doubled in value, 119% increase in value with an average raw sitting at $230. So uh, this book, again, it, it goes to show that once we got the announcement of King, people start looking to that next best thing. And although this one is, is solidifying itself as a key in and of itself, it's at the fraction of the cost of Avengers 8. And I think when you look at percentage, it has the potential to increase in a similar percentage that Avengers 8 has, although that dollar amount return is going to be much smaller, of course, but you're not putting so much, you know, uh, of a um, so, so, so high dollar amount into your investment as well. All right. Next up from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is Young Avengers number six. First appearance of Cassie Lang taking the mantle of stature. And as we know, the MCU is building up the Young Avengers, whether or not they use that name or not. They're obviously and clearly introducing all these characters. I definitely think we may see the evolution of stature in this film. If you look at the increase in value, it might boggle your mind. Current CGC 9.6 sitting at 104. Three years ago, 88. That's only an 18% increase with an average raw sitting at $35. So... Uh, I, there's not a lot out there on the census um, comparative, but again, a very affordable book right now that has the potential to soar, at least for the short term, because we see how movie spec, especially for the MCU right now, is crazy. I mean, we all we need to get is an announcement of a character and their first appearance like skyrockets from a ten dollar book to a, you know, to a hundred dollar book overnight. And we're paying four hundred and 
400 to $500 for a CGC 9.8. It's crazy. Now, are those prices going to hold? I don't know. But if you're in the speculating game and you're willing to take risk, this is another lower risk one that has the potential to definitely soar if we get some type of confirmation that this character is going to be in this film or introduced in the MCU. And then you can obviously flip and make a profit off of that, even if the book at some point in time in the future after might start to cool off. But again, uh, I think it's definitely possible that we're going to see this character start to develop in the Quantumania film. Now, Marvel Studios has one more film slated for 2023, and it's for a November release date, but the film has not been announced yet. But I'm going to bet my dollars that this is going to be the Spider-Man 4 slot. <laughs> Now, let me tell you why before I talk about the books. Sony and Marvel went going into their agreement and they signed their contract for another Spider-Man trilogy. They clearly stated in that agreement with Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige at the head running the show, they want a Spider-Man film every two years. And this doesn't count the Sony Spider-Verse. This is sp the actual standalone MCU driven Spider-Man movies. When was the last one? 2021. Two years from 2021 is 2023. So in my opinion, it is very likely that this November release date is going to be the next Spider-Man movie. And here's what we know about the next Spider-Man movie. We got a new director and they're going to take a more dark and mature tone and it's going to flesh uh, Peter Parker out in his college years. You take these variables into consideration and you think, what can that look like? And I think it's going to be much more street level. And we got that hinted, spoiler if you haven't seen No Way Home, at the end of No Way Home, because now nobody knows who, who uh, Spider-Man is. Nobody knows who Peter Parker is. And he doesn't have the Stark tech available. He doesn't have the remaining Avengers available to know who he is to help him. So he makes his own suit. We see that happen. And there he is right there swinging in that new suit. It looked absolutely amazing. He is going back to that neighborhood friendly Spider-Man, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And I think he's going to really get involved at that street level crime boss villain type of, of, of you know, toe to toe action. We also saw Daredevil. Charlie Cox show up in the movie, and I'm going to get to that. But we also, the other thing that we saw set up in No Way Home was the piece of the symbiote being left behind when Eddie went back to his universe, that symbiote was left behind, and that symbiote probably knows who Peter Parker is because they're an alien. Maybe they didn't forget in Doctor Strange's spell who spider-man was or maybe they just don't know who he is and they try to go search out spider-man and we see peter parker finally donning the black symbiote suit so folks that's why i have amazing spider-man 252 on this list the first appearance of the symbiote suit this book has already been on fire and i've told you all i've been saying this for years now once we see the symbiote suit attached to tom hall and spider-man this book is going to go absolutely nuts you think that this book has been going crazy already it's going to go absolutely nuts. Let's look at these numbers. Current CGC 9.8 fair market value, $1,950. Three years ago, it was at a mere $500. That's already almost a four-time increase in value at 290%, folks. That's madness. Average raw sitting at $212. You may say, Chris, you're crazy. Where's the ceiling on this book? This book is already you know, almost quadrupled in value. What more can this book do? Do what more can this book do? I'm telling you, folks. Once we see it take over Tom Holland, if I'm wrong, I'll call it out if I'm wrong. But I'm telling you, folks, I can't wait. All right, next up on the list is yes, Black Cat, folks. Amazing Spider Man number 194, the first appearance of Black Cat. Let me tell you why I put this book on the list. Again, spoilers for No Way Home. Mary Jane doesn't know, or excuse me, MJ doesn't know who Peter is anymore. She's going off to college. He didn't get in. This opens the door for a new love interest. Although I think Zendaya's MJ is going to be back and she's not going anywhere necessarily. 
I think this opens the door for a new love interest. And enter Felicia Hardy, the black cat. Fingers crossed, folks. I think it could happen. But let's look at these numbers. Current CGC, 9.4 fair market value, $1,103. Three years ago, $377. This book has almost tripled in value with 193% increase in value with 191 raw average. So again, this book still has been doing big things. I, I think this is a blue chip key for the future, no matter what, folks. No matter what, if this character shows up in the MCU or in the Sony verse at all, doesn't matter. I truly believe this is... In a sense, an undervalued blue chip key. And you guys know I don't like to throw the word undervalued around a lot, but there's a big ceiling for this book, in my humble opinion. We're going to talk about one more book today that pertains to this next Spider-Man movie. And that's Amazing Spider-Man number 546. This is the first full appearance of Mr. Negative, Martin Lee. Now, I'm going to look at the numbers, and then we're going to talk about why I picked this book. Current 9.8, $246. Three years ago, 124. It's basically doubled in value with a 98% increase. Average raw is still sitting at $16. Very, very uh, low risk, affordable books still. And here are my thoughts on this book and why I picked it for this list. The Feast has already been introduced. The Feast Center has already been introduced in the MCU. Spider-Man has, again, spoilers, Spider-Man lost Aunt May. He has no one. He doesn't have Uncle Ben. He lost Tony, his mentor. And he's now he's lost Aunt May. He has no family. Um, Happy doesn't know who he is anymore. So being on the street level and with Aunt May gone, I see Peter Parker getting involved with the Feast Center. And... I see them introducing Martin Lee to head with Aunt May gone. Aunt Martin Lee comes in. He starts running the Feast Center and he becomes a kind of a, a you know, I'm not necessarily a father figure, but a mentor, a new mentor for Peter, you know, to console him through all of his loss and his grieving. And they can build this relationship on a deeper level to where he's really connected with Martin Lee. As you guys know, if you know the character of Mr. Negative, Martin Lee, it's like almost split personality, you know, because when he's Martin Lee, he's a good guy. When he's Mr. Negative, he's a crime boss. So when you look at Mr. Negative as a villain, that's that street level crime boss stuff. And you guys are saying like, why didn't you pick Kingpin? Why didn't you pick a book with Kingpin? Well, I do believe we're going to see Kingpin cross over with Spider-Man at some point, but we know that uh, Echo is getting her own TV series. And I think Kingpin, the Kingpin iteration that we're seeing in the MCU, I think we're going to see him go that route first. I don't think he's just going to hop right over and be in a movie with Spider-Man. I think that's going to come a little later, probably a little later in the new Spider-Man trilogy. And then I think we're going to see Daredevil there as well. So when you talk about the crime boss level, I think they're going to go a different route at first. And bring in Martin Lee. There's a lot of other characters they can uh, show as well or introduce as well. But there's a lot here that they can really scale upward in making this relationship between Martin Lee and Peter and Mr. Negative and flesh this out. And who I really hope I'm right on this because if I am, it's going to be exciting to see this happen. So I can't wait for all of these films, folks. Let me know what you thought in the comics let me know what you thought in the comments below if you have any of these books, if any of them are on your radar, or if there's any other books that you thought should have made this list today. But before we go, we have a couple things. I still have a trivia question to ask you guys. And I got to give a big shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you guys so much again for the continued support month after month if anyone is interested in supporting the channel via patreon it's only $3.99 a month you get extra perks including early access to videos like these and also patreon exclusives like monthly q and a's also a big thank you to all my youtube channel members that's only $1.99 a month if you guys are interested by clicking that join button below you also get extra perks by joining there as well but folks i got a trivia question for you huge spider-man fan here and since we're talking about what character characters can show up in the MCU, 
I'm going to ask a Spider-Man related question. Are we ready for a chance to win that beautiful EGS 9.8 Virgin Red Sonia number one journals comics exclusive EGS slab? The question is, Amazing Spider-Man 546 is Martin Lee, Mr. Negative's first full appearance. In what book did Martin Lee slash Mr. Negative make his first cameo appearance in? Good luck to all of you. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell and like button. Comment below, folks. Be well, and until next time.